So, Universe, uh, a lot of speculation is still going around for the future of the MCU, and while we are still a month away from Spider-Man Far From Home, which will give us our first insight into uh, post a, a post-Endgame MCU, there is a lot of talk about what movies are coming out, what characters will or will not be in it, but more specifically, the villains. Now, apparently, and this looks very much all but confirmed, the MCU is not going to have one universal villain that they're all going to combat with Thanos. Instead, the MCU is going to break off into two major villains that one will f the uh, Avengers will face on Earth, and another one that will be uh, that the Guardians and other cosmic heroes will face out in, uh, out in uh, space. And there has been a lot of speculation of this. So let's talk about the two villains that are possibly going to be the next two big bads post Thanos. So let's start off with our Earth-based villain, and that is Norman Osborn. There is a lot of talk of Norman Osborn being the future of face of evil in the MCU on Earth. Now, as we all know, of course, Norman Osborn, the arch nemesis of the Green Go uh, you know, I almost said arch nemesis of the Green Goblin, oh my god, arch nemesis of Spider-Man, and there's a rumor that he may appear in uh, the in the MCU, come far from home. Now, of course, we all, you may be thinking Norman Osborn, really the Green Goblin? That's who they're going to use as the big villain. Well, that's not too far from what Norman was. You see, several a few years ago, Norman Osborn was a major MCU villain thanks to D Secret Invasion and Dark Reign. You see, Norman really like built his way up through the ranks, especially in. Um, in Civil War. You know, in Civil War, he worked with Tony, created the Thunderbolts Initiative, and hunted down um, non-registered heroes to either arrest them or have his Thunderbolts kill them off-screen. So, that was the big thing, is that Norm... And then Norman got power for... You know, he got control of S.H.I.E.L.D., dismantled it, made Hammer, and made his own Dark Avengers. Um, and became a MCU villain for a lot of the Bendis era of Avengers. So that was a big thing with that character, was that... Um, the uh, the MCU had a big villain because Norman was the face of evil with the Cabal, uh, which was like Emma Frost, Namor, uh, the Hood, Loki. Uh, I'm trying to remember who. Oh yeah, Emma Frost and Magneto and Doom. Now the big thing, of course. Now Norman is very much became like the anti Tony Stark. He was he was intelligent. He was cruel. He was brutal. He was also you know, uh, had a, he was also had a way with the people like Tony did. So, yeah, I'm totally fine with Norman being the next big bad because he could easily worm his way into it. The way I see of how they could work Norman, if this is true, of how Norman could be, you know, work his way into being a big villain for the MCU, is that you have him be the one who bought uh, Avengers Tower. And for the past five years, during the five years of the snap, you know, the five-year era of the uh, of when the snap of uh, you know before the Avengers managed to bring everyone back, you could have it that Osborn was building power in those five years because Tony wasn't around. Tony was off having a kid and living out in the woods off the grid. Tony Stark wasn't there, uh, but Norman Osborn was there consolidating power with the remaining governments of the world. And no doubt, you know, uh, Oscorp. He probably still had Oscorp up and running post the snap. He still got a lot of people working for him or recruited people to work for him. And that got him in good with, um, you know, the remaining governments of the world. And now that Tony's gone, Stark Enterprises is no longer, you know, Star the Stark Industries is no longer a threat to him. You know, it's still around, but it's, you know, it's not what it used to be. It's no, it's in no comparison to Oscorp now. So, Osborne would make a lot of sense of being that political villain because he could be like, uh, he could have diplomatic immunity, he could be good in, in good with, um, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the government, he could be in good with, um, uh, what's, fuck, Ross, yeah, with Ross now, why did the name skip, uh, get away from me, but yeah, he can get in good with Ross, um, and work better with him. So that's a, you know, this is all kind of a, you know, a interesting situation. Plus, this could in, in, introduce us to new villains. Now, I personally would have preferred Doom as our next big villain, but there's still a chance that Doom could show up. 
Doom could easily still be a part of the Cabal. Remember that thing I told you about? Osborne was in charge of it, and Doom was one of his chief allies in that. So Doom could easily be a part of that, and, it, and the Cabal could easily be the next um, thing they build to with the Earth-based Avengers fighting against, depending on whose side, what characters are on that. So that's a very good possibility that... And who knows, maybe Doom will wrest control of, uh, of uh, the Cabal and whatever he's planning... Um, to, uh, you know, to work for his own ends. That's a major aspect for Osborn. What I hope so is that, you know, Spider-Man and Osborn do have that rivalry because it is one of the most epic rivalries in comics. And yeah, I do want to see him in the Green Goblin costume, but there's something telling me that we may not see him as the Green Goblin. We may see him as the Iron Patriot. There may be a chance that, you know, they, you know, the Iron Patriot armor gets taken away from Rhodey and it get and uh, t and uh, Osborn takes it, modifies it to his own ends. So it could easily that we may not even see the Green Goblin, but may see Iron Patriot and his Avengers team, or as he will call, or he might even call it the Thunderbolts, overshadow the Avengers. Tony's gone. Cap's gone. Thor's out in space. The here there isn't really much of an Avengers team. I mean, Hulk is apparent, according to Kevin Feige, that um, injury Hulk took from the snap is permanent. Which I call total BS, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah, that's the um, that's the big thing is that you know the Avengers aren't really united right now. They united to fight Thanos, but now they're kind of all over the place. So who's gonna move in and save the world from another Thanos or what have you? Osborn and his Thunderbolts, or if he calls them his own Avengers. So that's another major thing you have to look at. Um, so yeah, Norman Osborn is, again, this is all rumor and speculation, but still, I'd say Norman has a pretty good shot of being the next MCU villain. Anyway, so, you, like I said, there is a second villain that is going to play a big part in the MCU, according uh, to the rumors and hearsay. Um, and that is on the cosmic side, and that villain is Korvik. Now, if you don't know who Korvik is, that's totally fine. Not a lot of people do. Michael Korvik was a guy who was endowed with, pa with um, infinite cosmic power by an alien race. I believe it was the Kree who did this. It was either the Kree or the Skrulls who endowed him with um, a piece of the cosmic cube and made him essentially a god. They made him a godlike being, and he nearly wiped out all of creation. In fact, the Korvik saga and uh, Michael Korvik himself was created by Jim Starlin, the guy who created Thanos, of course. So yeah, Korvik is an interesting villain, although he's more of an Avengers villain, and he hasn't really been used, utilized a lot because, well, Korvik was a fucking god, you know, um, so that's kind of a big thing, um, and that's kind of an interesting thing. You have Thanos, who was godlike, and then you have Korvik, who essentially is a god. He is essentially a god, um, that had infinite cosmic power and not itty bitty itty bitty little space to move around in. <laughs> Kudos if you caught that reference. So Korvik is an interesting pick. Um, again, none, keep in mind that none of this is confirmed, but Korvik is a fascinating pick because not a lot of people remember Korvik because mostly he was used as a one-off villain. Although, sure, he did come back a few times. He came back several times, but he never really had that impact he did as the Korvik saga. Um, but he is an he is a character that, you know, it's not like, oh, we can just take the stones away from him and beat his ass. No, you literally cannot beat this guy. In fact, they just got lucky. Like, it was sheer dumb luck and appealing to Korvik's humanity that they managed to beat him the first time around. He's, I don't know if he's gonna have that this time. Um, and the cosmic heroes are kind of broken up as well. You don't, the Guardians and Thor are kind of, um, looking for Gamora, or at least that timeline's Gamora. You also have, uh, the Nova Corps is gone. Not, a, you know, it's gonna take a lot, and there is rumors of a Nova film, which I'm hoping it's Richard Rider. Nothing against Sam Alexander, but let's be real, we all want, uh, Richard Rider <laughs> in the MCU. But, yeah. So... Korvik is an interesting one. I was thinking Annihilus, Annihil because there was a lot of talk of Annihilation being the next big event they, they move on to, but I suppose that's not going to happen now. But you know, like I said, this is all rumor and hearsay, um, 
But I, but it is all but confirmed that there is going to be two major villains now for the MCU. One on Earth, and one in, in space. I know a lot of us were thinking Doom and Annihilus, but I'm kind of okay with uh, Osborn and Korvik. I'm just wondering how they're going to build up Korvik, because, yeah, unlike he doesn't need to go hunting for his power, he is the power. So, I'm curious to know... Uh, how they're going to uh, how they're going to do Korvik if they are going to have him be the next big villain on the cosmic end? N Norman that would be is a great one to have because he's so vastly different from Thanos because you can't really punch him because he's got you know government backing and his own super team, so that'll be a fun change of pace. So, uh, and uh, again, maybe with the Cabal we'll have Doctor Doom there. But anyway. So you guys tell us here at Comic Universe in the comments alone, in the comments below, excuse me. Uh, are you got, what do you guys think of the possibility of Norman Osborn and Michael Korvik being the next two big villains of the MCU? Are you guys excited? Are you guys not? Um, and comment below of who you think, which two villains would you have as the big Earth bad and the big Cosmic bad of the MCU post-Endgame? Uh, like I said, comment below, and if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe this video, um, and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. We always appreciate that, and yeah, on behalf of everyone here, I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.